Psalm 100. Making Psalms 100, me personally, this is 1,767 verses been through the Bible. We've done Genesis 1 to Revelation 22, went back to Genesis chapter 1. Here we are, 1,767 verses. And I lost some members of my family during that. I hope pretty soon, and I don't know what number, but God will let, add to this family. 100 songs. Twice over. You get the videos on YouTube and SoundCloud. Make a joyful noise. And that appears seven times in the Bible, that joyful noise. Psalm 66, 1. 81, 1. 95, 1. 95, 2. 98, 4. 98, 6. And here, 101. I can't sing. That gives me no excuse according to the Bible. It says make a joyful noise. I mean, if you can't make a, if you can, all you can do is make a noise and you're not going to make it joyfully to God, you're going to be banging and, and, and just making noise that other people can be thrilled and this nonsense they call music today. Don't do it. But if you can't sing, you love the Lord, make a joyful noise. Seven is the number complete. That's kind of interesting. And on to the Lord. What do you do with heavy metal? And it's rock. And it's rap. Country. Is it on to the Lord Jehovah God? Then it's wrong. All ye lands. That may be the lands of, of Cana. The promised land. The nine and a half tribes, because two and a half tribes are on the wrong side. It's still the, all 12 tribes. The children of Israel. Maybe worldwide. Serve the Lord. Many people want God to serve them. And when God is done taking care of their needs, they want, if they're gone, they'll be back next time they need you. They don't understand the call to go preach the gospel. It's not a call to let your light shine. It says, go and preach the gospel. It says, pray without ceasing. Rejoice evermore. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Lift up your voice. Make a joyful noise. Peter got all upset when, when Jesus Christ knelt down and was going to serve them by washing their feet. But Jesus wasn't just serving, he was showing an illustration. Many people want their pastors to serve them, and they don't want to serve the pastor. They want, and they don't want to return to the pastor they're offering. And it says, serve the Lord. I didn't finish. With gladness. That's the offering that Paul speaks to the Corinthian church. Got to give your tithes. But if you don't give it joyfully, and, and you don't give it you know, without demand, God doesn't want it. God wants a cheerful giver. God doesn't want you to toot your horn in front of all the people in the world to see it. God doesn't want you to do it for his show. 
but he wants you to do it with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Singing is when you're happy. Singing is when you're joyful. Singing when you're not complaining. Come before God happy and joyful and with gladness. With a song in your heart for the Lord. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. Jehovah's Witnesses don't know that. Catholics don't know that. The atheists don't know that. The scientists don't know that. Many of your politicians don't know that. Your religions don't know that. It is He, God, the Lord, that has made us. Go ask any public school and college professor and instructor who made us. We're a product of evolution. And the space agency is going out there to find where life came from. You're not going to find it in the spaceship, you're going to find it in the Bible. But you've already rejected the Bible. You come across Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God, he said, no, it ain't God. Why are our public schools closed? Coronavirus. No, because you took God out. We said, we don't want God. We don't want his word. We don't want Jesus. And we don't want prayer. I said, okay, fine. I'll dismiss your school. And may we never get public school systems back again. I've been homeschooling my children ever since they were kindergarten, three kings. I wouldn't send my children to a public school that denies God and teaches you how to pray towards Mecca and a prayer mat and do Native American God and goddess worship and worship every other God and goddess and that thought of the mind and yoga and all that no nonsense and not teach God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Don't open the public schools ever again, Lord God. Keep them shut. How dare they put in God we trust and, and, and one nation under? How they put that lies and nonsense? Oh, it's not the God of the Bible. It's other gods. No, he that is God, it is he that made us and not we ourselves. That's evolution. Evolution explains to us that we made ourselves by a non-God. Because we won't have to be held to accountable that the Lord, he is God. We worship the Big Bang, which is nothing. They'll say, and I've had people come up to me. But where did God come from? Where did your Big Bang come from? Somebody off eating somewhere a can of beans or something? Where did the Big Bang come from? Where did your God come from? My God has always been. And always will. What about your Big Bang? Your Big Bang don't explain anything. In Romans chapter 1, they worship the creature more than the creator. And Christians are doing it. Lovers their own self. I have met such pious and boastful Christians. It is God that is pleased that I am in the church house today. Give me a bar bag. I said something like that with the one person one time, bar bag or something. I got highly upset. Evidently, they didn't read Revelation chapter 3. You don't know what I'm ever going to say out of my mouth. Sometimes I don't even know what I say out of my mouth. We are his people. Okay, who is that? The sheep. Of his pasture. Psalms 23 1. 
You know, we wouldn't want anybody to get upset and find out, you know, who's the we? It's America. All right, Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. We are the sheep of his pasture. The Lord. Here's the Lord. We saw him. My shepherd. Let's look at Isaiah 40, verse 11. Isaiah 40, verse 11. He shall feed his flock. Okay, there's the sheep. Like a shepherd. Who is this? John chapter 10. John chapter 10. We'll find exactly who it is. John chapter 10. Verse 2. But he that enters by the door is the shepherd. Oh, there is he is. The Lord is my shepherd. Of the sheep. Oh, there's a sheep. Verse 3. To him the porter opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name. Verse 7. Then said Jesus unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Verse 11. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep. Verse 16. Other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Gen, uh, John chapter 1. Verse 11. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Who yelled out, crucify him, crucify him? American. Where the sheep? Sixteen twenty, the pilgrims came to America, Native America. Psalms eleven, uh, Psalms one hundred, is written way before Jesus was ever born. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. That is the nation of Israel. The pastor is the land of Palestine, the land of Cana, the, the land of milk and honey. And I guarantee there's probably some com commentary out there. Oh, if you take Psalm chapter 11 with reference to the church. I've given up on commentaries in the book of Psalms. Church, 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 church. There is no church. You can maybe spiritualize it. But that is not America, that is not Gentiles, that is the nation of Israel under Jehovah of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the twelve tribes. And you don't even see any mention of Dina or Dana, a daughter of Jacob. Enter into the gates with thanksgiving. The gates of what? Jerusalem. Maybe Trump's trying to build a, a, his own new, new Jerusalem saying, no, we want to keep the Mexicans out. I don't know. I don't know what's in his head. But here's Jerusalem. And if it's, the, if it's the millennium, there's the temple there in the walls in Jerusalem. 
coming to Jesus Christ. If it's the tribulation, it's there's the there's the city and the walls. It says come with thanksgiving. There's no complaining. Onto his court. That's the temple, and that would be addressing the time period Solomon temple that had the court. Or if it was the court of the Moses or David's, the courts would be where the brazen altar is and the, the, the brazen labor. That was the court. But it says, shall we read the Bible? Courts, plural. There's one court of Moses. There's one court of David. There were all kinds of courts and buildings and storage areas of Solomon. We got to read the Bible and study the Bible. With praise. What was the praise and the thanksgiving that you would bring into the courts? Your offering. Every court and every room and every place had a one for grain, had one for gold, had one for silver, had one for olive oil, had one for whatever you brought to the Lord. And you brought what you had for the Lord, for the priests and the Levites, and you brought it to the court saying, this is my offering, I give it to God with cheerfulness. 1 Corinthians. Come on, you don't really believe tithing in the church, do you? Really? Pastor, you believe in, in tithing? Yeah, you're Malachi. All right, Pastor, here you go. What, what's this? It's a puppy. It's yours. I don't want a puppy. It's the number 10th puppy in my litter that my dog had. Every 10th, right? That's a tithe. So when your kitty cat has kittens and your puppy has puppies and your bird has birds and and you come in with broccoli and, and uh, rhubarb and all that disgusting food, every tenth goes to the pastor. Try that one. Well, you just sell the dogs and give them money. Okay. I don't know. But we're to be thankful unto him, God. And bless his name, Jehovah, Millennium, Jesus. And there will be no hurry up of, of pigging out. And no pigging out of gluttony, because I gotta do all the dishes and sleep early so I can wake up for Black Friday. I don't know when Black Friday came out, but we know the big smiley sun glazed superstore, the one that started it. In the time of family, in a time of true thanksgiving to God, nonsense. And then they added a little football to it. I'll give you one credit with George Washington. He gave the day of thanksgiving to God. Now whether he believed God or trusted Jesus Christ as his Savior, I don't know. I've read some of his, his uh, diaries. How he stay home sometimes from service and let Martha go. I read his diary. I got, I mean, there's a whole shelf of them. I didn't get them all. Maybe I came up short and didn't find the one where he trusted Jesus. I got bored. For the Lord is good. There's none that do it good. No, not one. Contradiction. No, it's not. When somebody comes up to me, they I'm good. They're saying, well, you know, God is pleased with me. God's going to like me. 
God's going to allow me to go to heaven because I am good. Not according to the scriptures. And when you read the scriptures, God is good. Because God is holy, righteous, wonderful, counselor, the mighty judge, the judge of the earth. He's holy in his judgment. He's correct in his judgment. He will never lie. That's good. We could never be the good that Jesus was in the, in the flesh. And he's better than good as God today. How many people are seated at the right hand of God? His mercy is everlasting. I think it's funny because I think there's a, a, a product name, Everlasting, for the boxing world. Gloves and all. It's not everlasting. When the heavens and earth roll away as the scroll, and Peter says it, burn up his fervent heat, it's going to burn up. And his truth, well, guess who that is? I am the way, the truth, and the life. Endure it. <laughs> God's got to endure with his, with his human race that sin. Man, he had to endure Israel in the wilderness. Man, they ever said Moses and, and God ever got angry with Israel together? That was it. They're done. There was times that Moses had to had get God to repent. And there was times that God had to get Moses to repent. To all, not a few, all generations. So there is the one that is worthy to be praised. God, our creator, our thanksgiving. And it's written to the people of Israel. God's people. 